Well, he can change. He can change anything. Yeah, he can change anything. And I did shower today. Oh, my God. He is the queen this evening. Okay, it is 1700. I'm calling and meeting the order. Quick shuffle. Oh, that was clever. That was clever. Yeah. There you go. He's good. Okay, Suzanne, the meeting has been called to order. If you will please do a roll call. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairperson Andy Davenport. I am present. Vice Chair Lydia John. Here. Commissioner Thomas Palm. Absent. Commissioner Cameron Robertson. Present. Commissioner Chris Sonnier. Absent for right now. Uh, alternate Commissioner Carson Blakeso. Present. And Alternate Commissioner Josh Irvin. You do have one. Thank you. Are there any public comments? No, sir. In that case, we will move straight away to our consent agenda, items number one through four, to take just a moment and thumb through. We have our meeting minutes from July, August, September, and November. I will give you a moment. <laughs> There's some video. I mean, I see icons. Let's see. Let's Maybe one at a time. Yeah, just let me know when you're ready. Everyone good? Okay. So, um, any questions or comments from item number one, the regular minute from July 5th? I move that we approve the mass. Written. You can just approve the whole consent agenda. Yeah, you want to do that. Okay. You don't have to go one by one. Oh, okay. So, perfect. Yeah. So for items one through four, so any of our minutes, did anyone see anything that needs to be addressed? Okay, would you like to amend your? I will, I'll amend my um, motion that we accept and approve all of the minutes on our consent agenda from July 5th, August 2nd, September 20th, and November 1st. Okay. Do I call it? Yes. Vice Chair Lady Jones? Aye. Commissioner Kevin Robertson? Aye. I'm going to refer to you today as Commissioner. I'm going to see both. Uh, Commissioner Carson Blitzer? Aye. And Vice, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Person Andy Devonport. Aye. Thank you. Very good. That concludes our consent agenda. We will move on with the regular agenda. Item number five is discuss rainwater collection, including permitting processes, offsets, and impervious cover, benefits, use, et cetera. Um, the background on this is that um, Tomas brought it up at one of our meetings and wanted to discuss it. Um, I kind of tapped him to figure out what needed to be done, if anything. Um, around that same time, I believe that um, Chairman, no, Commissioner, what's he on? He's on the, well, Brummer, Chris Brummer, said that the city council, council member Brummer, thank you, was, um, uh, was also discussing this and that perhaps they were going to have something for us. But long story short, nothing was really done 
Um, Tomas never brought anything back and never communicated with me anything else about it. And then I never heard anything else from Chris Brummer or from city council about it. So this was an open item on our agenda. I don't remember if we tabled it or 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 what exactly, but, but somehow we punted it down the road a little bit. It's back on our agenda. I don't have anything to say about it. Um, this was something, like I said, that Tomas brought up. So um, there you go. We can open it to discussion. This is a discussion. We don't have to do anything with it. <clears throat> Well, according to the minutes, um, Deborah Hines did some public comment, and then we discussed it about obtaining community input, and then we didn't take any action. And that was pretty much it. And then um, the next meeting, there wasn't a quorum. So it's been kind of just sitting there, rocking along. So, I mean, I don't think we have any more action to take on it do we well i mean it's not it's not even an actionable item necessarily it's just no. a, a discussion at this point so we can we can discuss it if we feel like there's any i i guess the only thing i'll say is that within our existing ordinance there is a comment to receiving an offset credit for impervious cover if you have an eligible rainwater harvesting system or something like that but my understanding is that's not actually defined and doesn't really apply. It, it was put in there somehow, but doesn't hasn't been fleshed out enough to actually make sense. So I do know there are individuals around the city who are um, installing significant. So so a 50 gallon is a is a drum, a normal size drum, and people are putting up you know several hundred gallon collection systems on their houses. Um, I don't know that there's anything we need to do with that. I, I, so is it, they should, it shouldn't count as an impervious, it already does it, it already does it count as an impervious. It, it, well, um, the rules for impervious cover are the same. So if, for example, you build a foundation and you put this large container on the foundation, well, that, mm -hmm. that would apply to your impervious cover. The, the the question I think that came up is, hey, can I offset impervious cover credit? Like right now I've got a whatever, a four thousand square foot house. So I've lost, you know, forty percent of my property's impervious cover. If I collect all that rainwater and do something appropriate with it, can I thereby reduce that and now build my deck or my sidewalk or whatever else I'm doing? Does the impervious cover have to do with drainage too in the city? Yeah, it does. You know, there's a most there's so many houses that are built prior to uh, the city of Wood Creek incorporating that don't meet impervious cover. Mine's a good example of it because um, there's zero lot line type things, and the houses take up more than yeah, more than yeah. thirty. Yeah, yeah. So um, I. This right now, I mean, I don't know that I have any input to it at all at this point. Um, I think that um, this would be something that maybe the ordinance review committee would look at. No, mm -hmm. you don't think so? Okay. I, I think if, if city council is discussing it or if citizens bring this up to city council is something of interest to them and then city council officially brings it to us then, then that would make sense for us to invest our resources looking right. into it um the, the, again the reason it came up here is because tomas who on this body brought it up so it was kind of his baby but, but as of right now there's no permitting for that right the rainwater collection all right, all right. Yeah. Correct. If somebody wants to put it on, it, you know, they can put a, a, a rain harvesting or a bucket or whatever you want to call it, um, or lameness terms, uh, and it would count against the previous cover. It, it would count, count it against would it? it? Correct. And so, you know, if I already had 30%, I would not be able to do so the. Oh, okay. I would not be able yeah. to do it. Exactly. It's a yeah. count, really. We'll, we'll well, encourage that. Yeah, I mean, 
make and 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 again even even beyond that the the what what's ten percent reduction written in our ordinance implies that if you collect rainwater um, that you can. Well, basically, I was looking in here, and in order to qualify to receive credit for rainwater harvesting, the system must be designed to exceed normal draw. It, it's real ambiguous, mm -hmm. and then credits can zero out impervious cover for purposes of calculating runoff treatment for the captured area. So I don't know what that means either. <laughs> yeah, it means nothing. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's why I think it doesn't doesn't really apply right now. Right. Uh, there's also I mean obviously there's a lot of work to need to be worked on this. Yeah. There is nothing to give you or anybody direction until we sit down or, or, or council sits down and talks about this okay. or comes up with kind of a, a foundation of this. I think okay. it's premature to go into any of this. Um there needs to be a lot more behind the scenes work. To present some information and some content to you, so you can investigate it and make a decision. Mm -hmm. And um, is fifty under? Fifty. Um, this is under. What, what section is this under? Fifty point three seven. This part of this part of um, it would also require a public hearing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fifty. So yeah, I mean, seven. there's a lot of weight like work that has not been done and. For y'all to just kind of start going into yeah. there, it's it's really. I'd like to see more there. research and. Right, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that needs to be put together yeah. in order to bring something before you, so y'all can discuss it rather than oh, just yeah, there this out. Yeah, there were there there were there were two pieces. The first was Tomas, and uh -huh. if someone from this entity wants to go research something and then make a presentation. Great, you know, we'll we'll all listen to that. But that is not a decision too. No, I don't think he's so. Okay. He's traveling. Which, which, you know, probably one of the best things is, is maybe if me and Tomas could get together when he gets back. Once it's he, this is his kind of thing, and I know Council's looking at it too. And you know, maybe in a couple months we yeah. can bring something to you where where there's something more substantive that, that y'all can talk about. Well, I know there's all kinds of catchment systems, right? There, you know, this is a very, as you can see, yeah. there is nothing really written. This is going to be a whole new, how are you calculating it? Exactly. How is staff going to calculate it? How, do you have to have a minimum size? Is there a maximum size? Are you taking it down to zero? Are you doing a percentage off or is a 100% off? Yeah. Um, what are Does you it using have, it for? Are you, are you using it for irrigation? Are you using it? Is it non potable? Is it potable? Well, it's all be for irrigation. I would think so, but you know. I mean, you walk to whatever block, but the brewery up here. Yeah. But it has to be by the gallon because uh, you can just go really wide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and it comes up too. Okay, then that would be behind the fence. Could it be on the side of the house? Could it be in the front of your house? Yeah. yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, and that's true. You, you, you can't do aesthetics. And so, once again, but you can say it has to be behind the fence or something. So, like I'm saying, there are many. How about this? Things that can you leave it open on top and then also use it as an above ground pool, only not really because that's not yes. a yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 That's right. Exactly. A removable top. And then you're crawling in there to clean it out and check it out and splash it around. You have to say how easily it's time for you to do. All right. Any, any, those are the table. We don't need to. We don't, don't need to. Yeah, we don't, don't need to. We don't need to give anything. You don't need to vote on it. Don't don't it's, it's, just, it's just a discussion. It will show back up when when it is ready. Yeah. Okay. Um. When there are more things to, when there's more structure. Yeah. To this. something we're talking about. Correct. Right. Okay. Very good. Um. And then the final item we're moving on to number six. It's got to take possible action regarding a recommendation. The city council regarding possible updates to chapter 156.057, potentially including but not limited to the consideration of increasing side and back fence height limits to eight feet. Um, my, my understanding is they're currently limited to six feet. 
and someone has requested that they be allowed to put up a eight foot fence instead of a six foot fence. And so um, it was brought to us. City Council was looking at it, but that's a zoning issue. So, <clears throat> yeah, you want to give you some color on yeah, that too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there, I don't understand. Okay. You know. they're, 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 they're uh, currently in the city. Sand the gap droppers. Okay. So you live on um, Augusta Lane or someplace like that. You, your fence cannot be higher than cannot be higher than uh, six foot tall, and you know with the elevation, sometimes people see in your fence or in your yard. There was a a, a resident here that um, had a uh, jacuzzi hot tub or whatever, and there was a recently a new built new house that was higher than his that looked into his thing. He came and got a variance for his house for eight foot fence. And so council wanted y'all to look at the only thing that would be changed in the ordinance is changing six where, where six foot fence is allowed, change that from a six foot fence to an eight foot fence. So they wouldn't have to come and get a variance. So they could put their, their fence two foot higher, you know, especially on maybe Augusta Lane or not, um, where you're backing up to a rank row 12 or, or something like that. So that's what they wanted to look at. Okay, so here's my question. Since it just says uh, eight feet high, it doesn't say anything about, you know, backing up to the golf course or anything like Correct. that. Correct. And so that would be my concern. Is that something that, that we need to worry no, about? No, because that will not change. There is only In the back page. There's a, the, the, very, the very last page the the okay. only the only thing that would be changed is code section the actual 156.057 uh -huh. and you can see that it's going to be uh, <clears throat> don't worry about that or hedge um, it says six it goes to eight so we're not talking about the golf course we're not talking about setbacks. We're not talking about anything. We're talking about, okay, if you currently could do a six foot fence, now you can do an eight foot fence. I don't have a problem with that. But there's, there's, there's something else that addresses specifically, like the golf course, you can't put up a wooden. Correct. Right. That's in a different set. Yeah. Exactly. The only place that it talks about a six foot fence is, is, is in 156.057. Yeah. Okay. And so we. You, that was why I was asking. The only thing that this would. This kind of isolated. The only thing that would change is the, uh, this 156.057. Okay. And then here's the, uh, here's the actual fence ordinance. And actually to be specific, you know, it's 156. When, 156.0.157a is the only wording in that paragraph that would change in that whole section. Now that's that's up to us, right? I mean, yeah. here yeah. Yeah, their 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 thought is including but not limited to. So I think what they're saying is, hey, look at all of this. Does it make sense to change any of it? But specifically, what we're interested in, we being City Council, is changing this six foot area. Yeah. It's Next house to house. Well, here, here's one of my questions. I, I think, and I don't know, so maybe maybe some of y'all know, but um, I think like if you go to Home Depot and you buy new wooden slats because you want to repair your fence, your choices are probably six foot and eight foot. Correct. So I mean, I guess my question is like, what if someone comes to you next and says, well, I want a ten foot fence? No, they would have to get a variance. Well, I know, I know, but while we're discussing this. But, uh, yeah, y'all y'all can say uh, you know your recommendation can be eight foot fence, and then somebody may want a ten foot fence, and they uh, council may say, hey, can these look at ten foot fence? Yeah. And you may come back and say, no, council. But or you can, may come back this time and say, I was going to say, council. We could well, we could consider that right now. Like we don't have to. We're not stuck with oh, you have to choose either six yeah. foot or eight foot. Well, eight can, foot. Fences are pretty well standard, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, because yeah. I I remember you either normally have a six foot fence or an eight foot fence. Yeah. Very rarely. It starts to get a little security with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you trying to keep in? T Rex? 
Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. my kids. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So what, what what do we think? Um, let's speculate on why someone would not want that. Like, let's play devil's advocate for a second. Okay. Uh, why why would you not want your neighbor to be able to put up a neighbor's sign? You. Okay, so maybe it's obstructing your view. Like, yeah. hey man, my neighbor puts up an eight foot fence right there. I can no longer see. Scenery. Yeah. Something. Or right. Yeah. Okay. But, okay, that's why if it's just. House to house, it makes sense to me. I don't, I don't want to see the sunset and you out there. Oh my gosh. I'm good with the next foot fence. I mean, that's my opinion, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't because I think that's pretty much standard when you go around more often than not, you see eight foot fences, you know. So. I will tell you this will take a public hearing because it is a, a zoning change. So you know, you nothing will be decided tonight other than maybe you know we can talk about uh, doing a a public hearing on this. A public hearing for P and Z, correct? Mm -hmm. You have to have a public hearing in order to change this ordinance, and so you know nothing can be okay, done until is... after that after that meeting. This is going to the rear side of the back yard, or yeah, it's on the front. So, yeah, that right. would okay, be another reason if it's just like makes everything look a little less friendly to have all these high fences. I know the negative, but and again, it doesn't affect me because we can't have fences in our neighborhood. Kevin, if somebody does come to you and wants a variance, mm -hmm. um, is that just your decision or is no. it the council? If it goes in front of the board. But board of adjustments, which is basically council, what they have to do for a variance, any variance, is is they have to fill out a form and it is five hundred dollars. Oh, wow. Okay, and then it gets put before the board of adjustments, which is council, and kind of tell the story of of why I need that variance, and it just can't be because I want one. There has to be a a a a, a hardship justification. Okay. Yeah, and so. What council was trying to get out is, it, it, and I want to speak for council uh, by no means, uh, but I think the feeling was they were, they didn't mind the eight foot fences because they did grant the variance, but they don't want to have $500 yeah. to have an eight foot fence. They would rather just have it in the code to have higher fences. Mm -hmm. Because we read on, on this on that particular one, we also staff gives a recommendation to council, and we recommended that council give him the variance. Yeah, well, it makes sense. That's what I said. It makes sense in that case. The neighbor's foundation was like three feet high. Oh wow! Yeah, the house that was their previous, and it was next to a <laughs> lot, and they finally built a vacant lot, and mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it's just there no way. Uh, do do you know? Are there other eight foot fences? Like is this? No, there is no other. The apartment complex had to build an eight foot fence. It was requiring part of the development contract. Like, nobody else I know has an eight foot fence. So like, I mean, if we were to like, if there were a public hearing right now, I, I probably wouldn't expect many people to show up being like, we want eight foot fences. Is what it sounds like to me. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Like you said, I think 10 to 12, maybe you should get a variance because then it doesn't really go by hand. Yeah. So, it's a good. Yeah, it's the over standing there. Uh, I, because we, we have to inspect the fences, even when you get a fence permit. And we, I mean, I, we went down there and looked, and you can't tell that it's an eight foot fence. Yeah. The two extra feet is really not, because it's kind of on a slope lot anyway. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's mainly just, I just don't have to look at the paper when I'm out of my kind of boat. Well, and I, I understand that. Um, okay, so um, we can continue to discuss this. The the um, take possible action regarding a recommendation to city council regarding possible updates. So.
So, so if we recommend you know, the we next, thing, next thing that you would need to do is direct staff to set up a oh, area for P and Z for, P and Z for, for this, and it would probably be in February. Okay. Because of the holidays, I don't think we can get it yeah, ready sure. for January. Yeah, January. Yeah, January. So that's just being nice on staff, but we surely could send our back to let's tell. Um, like I said, there's nobody looking to do it right now, so I don't think that it is a uh, a fire alarm kind of. Well, we have to do this right away, but it is something that they would like to look at. So I think February should be a great time to. And then, um, uh, uh, just just to play this out, we hold a public hearing. No one has any concerns. A couple of people are in favor of it. We make the recommendation to city council. Yeah, we think eight foot fences are fine. Mm -hmm. City council holds a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Correct. You send the recommendation to council, and then um, they would have a public hearing. Um, they would get your recommendation, and then they would make a uh, after their public hearing. Then they could. Vote on whether to change that ordinance. Okay, in February, we're supposed to review the comprehensive plan at our regular mm -hmm. so, um, It take a little bit of time. It will take a little bit of time. Yeah. <clears throat> a hearing, I think, if we did it at the very beginning, wouldn't take that much. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't think a public hearing will work in that well. I don't think there would be. Very much comment, but I have been wrong before. Yeah, well, I mean, when I expected pitchforks, it's been calm. So, you know, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you don't know, I mean, you know, just right. But your I, people should look against the new one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm good with the eight foot pants. I'm good with the six foot pants. I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. But okay. really well, let's you know, make a motion. Yeah, we can, you can yeah. just direct staff to. Oh. Uh, we don't have to. This you want to have a public hearing in, in February? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will get a public hearing for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, February would be fine. You have to, have, you know, because you're gonna have to put it in the. What? Yeah, those meetings on my birthday. Oh, uh, awesome. Awesome! Let's well, so we get to the Yes. And bring cake? I'm going to make an announcement. You're asking me if I can make this. We can make this. Can we decorate and shoot? All right. Play day. And so February 7th would be your public hearing. It's going to be a very special public hearing. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. <laughs> For you guys, it's okay. Oh, my phone is saying, I'm not sure I understand. She can make my Yeah. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, let's see. Are there any other announcements? Going once, going twice. If not, I would entertain a motion that we adjourn this evening's meeting. I found it. Here we adjourn. Second that. All right, the meeting is adjourned at 1728. Good job, people. Good job. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that on the fences. Like I said, I just didn't want to.